sound and speed, camera and speed and action. Welcome to another Create Greg video. My name is Greg and in today's episode we are not going to talk about coffee. However, to be the best I can be with my YouTube tutorials. I watch plenty of them on YouTube and there is a lot of them with someone drinking coffee at the very beginning. So I thought maybe if I start with drinking coffee would add value to my video. Let's see how it goes. Coffee finish and poor jokes on the side. Time to dive into another breakdown of my cinematic B-roll, which I posted two weeks ago. Last week, I decided to break down my approach to sound editing within the B-roll. And after such a positive response from viewers, the amount of views, I thought, why not to do the second part and this time discuss how I use footage to tell the story. We will ignore sound today. If you have not seen the one and you're interested into sound editing and mixing, you will find video somewhere above. And let's today crack on with how I decided to tell a story, how I mix and match footage to achieve that result. Let's dive into it right now. Let's talk about our timeline quickly. Below you can find our sound effects and soundtrack. I use different colors, especially for sound effects, so you could understand better when I talked about it previously. If we look at our footage, there is no particular color code for you to understand better. I shoot the whole project on Sony 6400. So with this one to get the slow motion, I had to shoot in 1080, which I upscaled to 4K in post-production. The rest of the footage I shoot in 4K, 24 frames per second. I use different colors to make a note for myself. So please do not pay attention to colors too much. The main timeline is at the bottom called video number one and it's the one where you can find the majority of my footage. Everything what you can see above is pretty much to use as an overlays or stack up the footage to do wipe transition or other effects. Let's look at our B-roll first and then we will break down certain transitions, certain way of storytelling I apply to this video. And that will be the whole video. Let's rewind it to the beginning and start breaking down the whole B-roll. And one thing I supposed to mention at the beginning, I would be not able to go through every single transition, every single idea, because this video would take ages. However, I would love you to focus on storytelling. There's a lot of 
good looking videos out there and we are so focused on learning this technique, this transition, visual effects, colors, it's all important, don't get me wrong, but the most important part of a good video, it's story itself. So when you get the footage and when we go through that footage, please pay attention to the way how I decided to tell the story, the way how I decided to match it and how it started and how it ended. A bit of backstory of this B-roll. Having extra time during lockdown, me and my fiance decided to shoot epic B-roll of her making cake for my birthday. So on the first day, my fiance prepared the cake. That would be the good idea to start video. Then the main day when we decided to create this epic setup with the light, we shoot the main part, how she made the cake, then the cake needed to stay over the night, and the following day was the decoration of the cake. So I decided to use these three different days as the three separate parts to the video, which I mixed together and create the story which we are going to break down right now. Our opening shot. I have to admit it's not the best one. What I mean by not the best one, not the one which will get people's attention. The idea behind it is to show the empty space and evoke a question mark with you, then show the camera, establish more to whom this video is dedicated because my idea was not to show off how greatly you can make cake. My YouTube channel is not about making cakes, it's all about the video and storytelling. So knowing that will be B-roll of the cake, but showing the camera at the very beginning to relate to the people who are into that subject. Then we've got the white one where we see our cake and the camera. And now we pretty much establish what this video will be all about. We've got the text, text to make it kind of retrospective. Fast paced cut to evoke further interest into video for everyone who got to that point. Let's look at each of them separately. The whole video is edited in DaVinci Resolve and if you have been using this one in the past so you will understand how it works. However, in every single NLE Premiere Pro Final Cut Pro X um, you can do pretty much the same. It's just a different way of user interface how you go about it. Let's talk about the disc clip where we use our speed drum so as you see we start with showing the spoon after the title. So we sped up to 400%. Then we did transition and sped up even further to 1000, which created speed ramp. Then we slowed down to 500%. And then we did the simple cut. Another two shots, as you can see, they are at 100% speed. This is important note to remember. When you are into speed ramping and like this fast transition, a lot of people are capable to do the whole video in the same fast pace. The best part about the video, if you can mix and match different of them, you can speed up and then slow down. You do one effects and then you don't use the same effects again and again bring variety to your storytelling. That's the way how you can stand out with your video. Don't try to use the same effects again and again. Mix pace, mix effects to get the best result. Think how each of the effects would add to the story, not you will use it because you like it. Again, after two normal speed clips, we came back to 500. And then we did Another effect which you can find here, it was post-production sped up zoom in effect. In that case, what we did, we added keyframes to the footage and we created zoom in transition in post-production. So you can find the keyframes at the bottom and when you look at the position and zoom of the footage, it's zooming in and we're positioning to keep our eye in the same frame. Yeah. 
Then we see spinning cake. And again, we zoom in in post-production using keyframes, as you can observe here. Same again. And the third one, I decided not to use the same effect to bring variety. As I mentioned before, try to mix and match different effects and see how they look. Never stick to the same one because you like them. Experiment with different one and think what they add to the story itself. Another frame is a simple close-up at 100% speed with no keyframes. And we finish off this part with another zoom and then wipe transition. Let's talk about the wipe transition. Um, it's one of the most popular recently. Um, it gained actually popularity over the years and the same story, a lot of people overuse the wipe transition. When I was shooting video, I use quick pan with the camera from time to time to have the option to have this wipe transition in post-production. The same story, I used them a few times but not overuse it to make it boring with my video. This way how I do it, so when we see I'm going down with my camera for the clip over there. And this was the moment when I was transitioning to another part of this video story. So below we've got the solid black color. And if we go to our color tab, in the first note I use mask to hide our transition. So if I move forward we see the mask keyframed and going up. If I turn off the mask, this is how it looks without the mask. Once the mask is on and make it transparent, we see actually the bottom layer, which is this black solid. And this way I use this nice and effective transition to move to another stage of my video. I've got the moment of solid. We've got our titles, which were timed with the soundtrack. Then we've got this lovely light transition added in post-production. If I switch off the other layers, you will see the effect itself. Interesting thing, when we go to our color tab, and this is our effect. Now I will teach you quickly how to match color of your effects very quickly. So we've got our lens flare effect matching nicely our light in the background. However, in original file, the reflection was in the blue color. So to match it with my purple background, I went to hue versus hue graph. And if I reset that and go with the probe and probe my blue, you see, I got the point and then I'm manipulating this point to get me desired color on the whole spectrum. So if we see this purple looks pretty much like the one we've got, I will widen, I will widen the spectrum we are probing and then we've got this nice purple matching light comparing to the blue one we started with. And then we move to our out of focus opening shot for the second chapter. The zoom you see over here was done in camera. The lens I was shooting on, it was zoom lens. However, I didn't use zoom to get that effect. This particular Sony zoom lens have a very heavy lens breathing. What does it mean? It means when you change focus the zoom gently changes as well. It happens with the most photographic lenses. If you talk about the cinematic lenses, they've got the special glasses inside to manage that undesired effect. So out of focus, we zoom in. We've got this less breathing, which actually we use as an effect. Then we've got the click to the music, which we did zoom in post-production. 
we've got the pan down in camera to see our butter landing in the bowl and then we start our mixing. As I said previously, remember to mix and match pace as well as the different cuts. So this one was shot in 120 frames per second and this was uh, slowed down to 24, which gave us nice slow motion. Then we got the normal speed, slow motion and normal speed again. We've got another wipe transition. We stock up two clips together and once we pan with our camera using mask in the same ways as we used previously, this is how it looks with the mask applied. When we switch off the mask, we see how we pan to the table, mask back on and we reveal our subject. Instead of using fancy transition, we did another cut to the other angle of my fiance pouring some sugar into the bowl. Then we've got our slow motion again. Wipe pan. This wipe pan is different than the previous two I show you because the previous two was done in camera with me moving quickly the camera. This one is done purely in post-production. So if you see the keyframes, what I'm doing, I use the keyframes to move my footage to the left to reveal what's underneath to get to another frame. This one was actually done in camera. I pan from left to right. So even if you don't do in camera, there is still option to get that similar effect. It's not as good as in camera, but you can still get the pretty good result when you do in post-production by moving the whole frame to reveal what's underneath. Side note to this one, to make it more realistic, I added to it blur effect so this is how the frame look like without blur effect it looks normal but normally when you pan quickly you've got this blur because of the speed so i add the blur effect to make it more believable another post-production effect if you look at the keyframes I did post-production zoom out. The same story, to make it more realistic, I've added zoom blur and transit nicely to the footage underneath, which I actually used the pull from the camera to reveal our frame and what's going on. That's interesting in camera effect as well. So I set the focus in my camera and I move with the camera forward to hit the exact spot when everything is in focus. Simple cut, nice slow motion strengthened with sound effects. Same again with the light effects, it's the same type of lights I use with my opening scene. The same story to match the color, I use hue versus hue curves. And we've got two of them. Another one. Look how this simple visual effects add to the story itself. This is how it look without, and this is how it look with When I was shooting, I had this transition in mind in advance. When we go to the third and the final day, I finished the first day with top shot of the cake and I tried to match it as best as I could in the following day with the top shot as well. And it would allow us to transit from this evening light setup to the daylight. Now we've got the two matching shots, we've got the top shot and then 
medium shot when we see the cake and it reveals to us that we are not any longer in the night scene but we are in the middle of the day a few details decorating the cake And this is the moment when the music is slowing down and it was literally perfect moment to use the slow motion. Every time when you try to match speed of your footage to the music and you do it right, it adds tons to the story. Simple cast of the beat. We've got the one, two, three. And the moment when our music finishes, I time in the way the spinning of the cake finishes as well. And that's the end of the story. When you look at my timeline, you see this footage on the different video tracks. I shot a lot of footage on the last day, so I tried to find the best shot and cuts too much to the story and I was experimenting with putting them on the different layers. Once I established, in my opinion, the best solution, I just left them in the way, but we can put them all together because it's a simple cut. Yeah. And the last thing I decided to finish off my footage with behind the scenes photos and um, just to stand out from the other b-rolls and bring uh, another twist of my creativity to the video itself. Um, it's very straightforward. The bottom track is my animated branding. Then we've got all that photos I selected and I did animation to that photos using keyframes. The whole transition is strengthened with this nice clicking effect. I did compound effect and the last part was to reveal and keyframe the final photo. As you can see, I add transformation and cropping keyframes, which allow us to get this nice effect of revealing the photo. And yeah, that's all. It's hard to say whether the coffee I drank before helped me to tell the story of B-roll editing. However, if you found that video useful, feel more than welcome to leave a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. If you didn't like it at all, thank you very much for staying with me until this moment. I'm flattered and I've got a good news for you. Next week, I'm going to post another video. So feel welcome to come back and see whether you like this one and then consider subscribing or not. Until next one.